good to see you here tonight. I've got 6.30 by my watch. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. If you notice the handout, it's the one we did two weeks ago. Uh, didn't quite get halfway there, but uh, we're going to get through this. And uh, first, first thing uh, we talked about was forgiveness is a command, okay? It's a command. Uh, he didn't ask us if we wanted to forgive or not. He said, as Christians, we need to be able uh, to forgive. Uh, the second point is forgiveness is letting hurt go. And uh, this is hard to do. I know in some cases, uh, you know, pretty much every time I preach this, someone wants to come up to me uh, and have an exception to the rule. Uh, but when God tells us to do something, then uh, there are not exceptions. And I'm going to kind of share that with you uh, here in just a few minutes that I think can help you. But I will say this. The lack of forgiveness hurts your walk with the Lord, and it hurts your walk with others. Your, not your walk, your fellowship with others. It hurts your walk with the Lord, and it hurts your fellowship with others. So let's pick up here, and we'll do the second half of forgiveness. Ephesians chapter 4, I want to start in verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Okay? And uh, some people say, well, how could you do that? Well, folks, I believe that's exactly what Jesus did when he saw the money changers in the church, okay? He was angry at the sin, all right, but not angry at the folks. You remember, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, all right? And I'm telling you, Satan uses the lack of forgiveness to tear apart families, uh, to hurt relationships, uh, work relationships, uh, a lot of relationships. So uh, it says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. And even in my counseling, new, newly, or, or, you know, engaged couple, that's one of the things I tell them, never go to bed mad at one another, okay? Because you sit there and you, you seethe and you think on these things and we lose sleep, all right? And I told Lori early on, I'm not sleeping on the couch. I've heard that, you know, you're going to the couch. And also, folks, we don't need to be mad at each other and sleep, you know, back to back, all right? You know, we're, you know, we're going to be together, but I don't want to look at you. I don't want, you know. And so it's just not good. Uh, those seeds Satan plants in, in, in those instances, I'm telling you, they can really, really hurt. A relationship. So don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something uh, to give him who has need. And again, uh, if you look at verse 25, put away lying. Okay? And I, I, I really think in relationships, when we lie, it hurts the relationship because we, we don't know when to believe them, all right? So it goes hand in hand. And it's not talking about necessarily uh, getting a job here. It goes with that line. Uh, for instance, if you are paid so much an hour when you're paid for eight hours of work, but you work at home and, you, and, and you've uh, just worked seven hours, you stole, okay? And that's not good. And even in relationship. What I think it is saying is we have to be honest in all of our relationship. And again, you don't have to be brutally honest about things, all right? You can put things in a nice way without causing conflict. And then it says, let him who, or excuse me, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. And if you're like me, every once in a while, as soon as it comes out of my mouth, I think, ugh, I, I probably shouldn't have said that, and it's not a cuss word, okay? I don't cuss. Uh, I have done some things and hurt myself, and a cuss word, will it, it's just not in my vocabulary. I, I quit that, you know, way, way, way long ago. But it's just simply saying words that are said 
you can say I didn't mean it. You can say I was kidding, but still, folks, I cannot tell you how bad words can hurt a relationship, okay? It's very, you know, it's very hard sometimes. But what is good and necessary for edification that it may impart grace to the healers. And even talking about grace, folks, we are all under God's grace. And we need to extend that grace to others. And edification is, you know, you can say a nice thing just as easy as you can criticize or, or, or cut someone down or talk about someone. And folks, we need to control our conversations. And, and it's very important that we do that. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. And folks, I believe the lack of forgiveness grieves the Holy Spirit of God. He wants us as Christians getting along. He wants families getting along. He wants churches united in, in one accord. I was in a business meeting when I was a teenager, and they were talking you know, about the nominating committee. And a guy stood up in anger in his voice said, I think we ought to fire every one of the nominating committee. And I, I just, I was floored. I thought, what in the world? And I sensed that attitude, you know, in that. And, and folks, there are just some things we don't need to say. That is not the place to say it, okay? There's other ways uh, to, to do that. And, and it caused, I'm just telling you, it caused great conflict in our church. So be careful what you say. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And you can see the progression of what's going on there, folks. First, it just starts with anger. And then, then it just it, it gets worse and worse. And malice is, I want to get even. I want to get even. And folks, we know what the Bible says. All right, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. And here's what people do. They try to get even, all right? And God, I'm just telling you, God's not going to take your side when you're trying to get even. You have to, what, you have to let things go. And I know it's not easy. I, I'll say it again. It's not easy, but it's the right thing to do. It is the Christian thing to do. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Being kind. You know what it's missing in our society now? It's kindness. It's kindness. Our world is so focused on ourselves. It's about me. It's about you hurting me. It's about you, uh, you, know, you know, even in accusation, taking something I should have had that job, or I should have had that promotion. Be kind to one, to one another. Tenderhearted, okay? That, you know, that's the heart. The, the heart is who you are, okay? We shouldn't be mean-spirited. Uh, we shouldn't want that, you know, that, that need to, or, or even sometimes what we do is we talk about that other person. We want to bring them down uh, and hurt them. And we shouldn't do that. Forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgiven you. And folks, there's, there's some situations in life uh, that are unfair. There are some things that happen in our lives. Uh, you know, and, and what I have to say is, you know, in, in some of the situations that I've heard and I've counseled, all right, I have to say, you know, that Satan, Satan is trying to you know, pull you apart. Satan is trying to destroy your family. Satan is trying to. And I, you know, I don't want to give him too much credit, but it really is. A lot of it is spiritual warfare, okay? It's Satan using somebody to get to you. And I've said this about myself. If, if Satan can't get to me, he'll start on my family. I guarantee you he'll do that. And Satan doesn't play fair. Okay, but we need to be quick to forgive, and and that that will help us. But and there are sometimes situations in life where 
uh, somebody hurts you and you, they'll just say, hey, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. All right. Even, even sometimes, you, you know, we have trouble working out a problem in our life. And in Matthew chapter 18, it's very important that we do this biblical thing. Okay. Matthew chapter 18, when we're talking about forgiveness and letting hurt go, Matthew 18, verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, okay, if your brother hurts you, I think there are times when we hurt people and we don't even know we hurt people. And how can somebody correct something if they don't know it that? But here's where we make the mistake. When we go in accusing and we go in with guns blazing, we go in halfway mad, all right, and we don't need to do that. Kindness, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, and go tell him his fault between you and him alone. And folks, we don't do this very often. We always tell somebody else first. Well, Brother Mike has hurt me, or you, you just fill in the blank there. In the Bible, and, and folks, this is Jesus' word. All right, these, you know, I, I'm just telling you what Jesus tells us to do. Go to that person alone, just you and them. If he hears you, you have gained a brother. It could have been a misunderstanding. It could have been a misinterpretation. What you meant for it to say was not how they interpreted. And I've learned in my speaking, you know, and I've been doing this a long time, there every once in a while come, somebody will come by and say, you said this in a sermon, and it's against, you know, preaching or it's against the Word of God. And I'll just have to say, I don't think I said that. Tell me what you heard. Okay, and sometimes, again, I'm not trying to explain myself. I'm simply saying what we hear sometimes is not what is said. And so we have to be careful of that. If you go to that person, you work it out, man, things are done. Things are done. Verse 16, but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And that's saying don't line up six people and go attack one person. All right? Just say, you know, when you, when, when you get in this situation, all right, I'm going to bring somebody with me. I want you to bring somebody with you, and let's try to get this worked out. Okay? And a lot of times you can do it that way. And if he refuses to hear, tell it to the church. Okay? And, you know, church discipline, I mean, we say the word, but honestly, I've been at this 43 years of ministry, and I have yet to see church discipline in the church that I have. But if somebody is totally out of line, if we know the facts of the case, and this is true, okay, then we will do church discipline. We will do it here. Okay, but, but that's not what you want to do. You want to try to save that uh, uh, relationship. You don't want to embarrass somebody. That's why it's so important. But even if, you know, uh, I've known a case, a pastor told me uh, that, that this, this person was doing this. Everybody knew he was doing it, and they literally had to go to him. And he says, you can't tell me how to live my life. All right? And again, I, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't been a part of it. And, in those, and I think those cases are rare. But, but God's word says, all right, if they don't change, if they don't straighten up, then you, you do have a right to discipline them as a church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. And basically, we just, we just re, uh, withdraw fellowship from that person. Now look down in verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? You know, Peter wasn't shooting too high, was he? All right, seven times. And Jesus said, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And again, I don't think, uh, you know, I, I've had a person or two over the years ask me, 
You know, well, what I'm doing, I got a piece of paper, and every time that person uh, upsets me or, or does something wrong to me, I write it down. I, I put a mark there. That's not what Jesus is saying. Okay, if somebody genuinely repents and asks for your forgiveness, you need to do that. Okay, and, and uh, Jesus uh, obviously uh, meant what he was saying. So for, let, forgiveness is letting hurt go. Romans 12. Look at Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, verse 17. Repay no one evil for evil. What does the world say? <laughs> you have every right to do that. Okay? And folks, it's like our love. Some of our love is, is conditional love. I'll love you if you love me. I'll like you if you like me. I'll do something for you if you'll do something for me. It's all about us, and what, what do I get out of it? Okay? And so many times when Jesus was uh, dealing with the disciples, he just said, man, if you want to be uh, first, you've got to be last. The greatest folks are those, those who are servants, servants of God. All right? We all can't win every time. We all can't be at the front of the line. There is nobody that is right every time. Only Jesus is that way. So we have to understand, you know, just because somebody does us wrong, we don't have the right to get even or to do them wrong also. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And folks, when you're mad at someone or, you know, you have voiced that, Folks, it, that's just not good. It is not good. You are influencing people in a negative way. And a lot of times, uh, you know, it turns into sides. And, and it, it's just not good uh, in churches or in relationships. If it is possible, as much depends on you. Because I've heard people say, well, if, you know, that means it's, you know, maybe it's not possible. Well, what do you do with the verse, I can do all things? Christ who strengthens me. I have the ability to forgive. God put that ability in my life. When he forgave me, he showed me. He showed me. And it's like I said two weeks ago, I don't think, if you have seen as much damage as I've seen in my uh, Christian walk, talking to people about, in a lot of times, all right, I will say the biggest deal there's, you know, the biggest uh, reason for family splitting, it's over money most of the time. Someone took advantage of someone else, and, and now I'm not speaking to them. I, I, I hadn't talked to my sister in 12 years. And again, not my sister. I'm just giving you an example. And folks, it's like <clears throat> when I told um, one of my sisters was, what is it? Where, where you do the wheel, where you ex executor. And I told my sister when my mom passed away, if it's going to cause trouble, just leave me out. I don't, I don't want anything to do with it. Because, folks, it's not worth losing a sister or relationship over. Okay? And I'll, be, I'll give you this point. Folks, money doesn't buy happiness. Okay? And I'm not, I'm not losing family relationships, it, it, I'm, even over thousands of dollars. I'm not going to do it, okay? And, and I'm telling you, Satan uses that all of the time. And it says, if it is possible, which I believe it is, and here's the key, as much depends on you, okay? We're not talking about the other person. You do the right thing. You be the bigger man or the bigger woman. Okay? That's, that's what he is saying. Live peaceably with all men. Can you imagine what our world would be like if we just practiced that verse? Live peaceably. Folks, the beatitude. Blessed are what? The peacemaker. We need to be men and women of peace. Verse 19, beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather. Give place to wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. God's got it. 
And here's your problem with that. He doesn't always do it right away. You want your revenge now. You want him to sick him. All right? I mean, just like <laughs> James and John. Man, burn that town down. <laughs> you know, the fireballs from heaven. Get them, Lord. Get them, Lord. They treated us bad. All right? And God's, I, I know. And he, he does this with me also. God's up in heaven going, <laughs> just shaking his head. Y'all don't get it. You don't get it. All right? I will repay. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. All right? Folks, I don't know that I have any enemies. I mean, if they are, I don't know them. But it's not just feeding your enemy. It's, it's being kind to people. All right? If somebody is hungry, all right, feed them. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And there's sometimes I have to say, and it's not very often, I have to say, I'm not going there with you. I'm not. You are trying to stir something up. You are trying to get me upset. You're trying to, you know, and, and you know, my problem is not you and I. All right, it is spiritual warfare. Satan wants victory in this relationship. And Coles, <laughs> I, I, I was teaching youth this one time, and the, he says, you mean we can put coals on somebody's head? And I said, no, that's not what it's talking about. All right? It's just talking about, let me use this phrase, kill them with kindness. Okay? And here's the deal. To do that, you have to be humble. See, that's part of our problem when it comes to relationship. It's our pride. It's our pride. We have a right. You hurt me. Folks, I can, I can listen to conversations and tell you who's doing the right thing and do, who's doing the wrong thing. And we are so ingrained with the way the world acts that we think it's okay when God says it's not okay to do that. Then it says, do not, overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And folks, there's just sometimes, and folks, I know it's hard I know it's hard to let things go, but here's what's going on. I hope you know this. You're losing sleep. You're rolling around in your bed. You're mad, and they're over at home just just sleeping away like nothing happened. All right? And we need, let me put it this way. We need to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit in this area because the devil will tell us all these things, you have that right. They have hurt you. So we see forgiveness is a command. Forgiveness is letting hurt go. And then the last thing, forgiveness is truly redemption. Truly redemption. Luke chapter 15. And we know the story of the prodigal son. Uh, you know, probably late teenage years, 18, 19 years old. He didn't like his dad's rules. He wanted his inheritance before time. And the father just said, okay, that's what you want. You know, uh, that, that's, that's what I'll do. And he went to the far country, just wasted it, just, I mean, when you're sitting in a hog's pen because that's your job and the food starts looking good, <laughs> you have wasted a lot of stuff. You have made some bad choices. And then he looks up, uh, if you'll follow with me, uh, in verse 17. Verse 17, the Bible says, But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and fare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. What did he do? Man, he was humbled. Okay? He was humbled. All right? God had a lesson in life to teach this young man. And when he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had 
compassion. Folks, we need to have compassion for those who are hurting. We need to have compassion for those who are trying to do the right thing. We need to have passion, e- compassion even on those who hurt us and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. His father did that. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, uh, bring out the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. He didn't say, son, when you get a haircut, we'll talk about it. He didn't say, hey, you know, when you get a bath, when you straighten up, you know, when you tell me you're sorry for what you did, you, you know, which, which again, he, he, he was telling him that. But he wasn't putting conditions on it. Folks, that is unconditional love. Even when we mess up, God still loves us. That's not the question. The question is, how can we make this right? How can we take that first step? How can we swallow our pride and even even say, hey, you know, I'm sorry. If I offended you, I am sorry. Would you please forgive me? And he said, bring the fattest calf here and kill it and eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found and they begin to make merry was dead. Folks, the guy's spirit, I mean, he was as low as you could get. That son was literally, you know, crawling around in pig slop. But yet the father said, you know, he he didn't say, hey, you hurt me. So, you know, and, and make all these conditions. All right. He said, son, I love you. I want to restore our relationship. I want to do the right thing. And the Father is a picture of our Heavenly Father. And folks, that is true forgiveness there. That is true forgiveness. And it's hard to do when somebody hurts us deeply. But folks, that is, that is true forgiveness. And uh, John chapter 8, John 8, verse 7. And we know this story also, you know, the folks caught this lady committing adultery. You know, I I personally think it was a setup. You know, they knew what they were doing. They were just trying to trap Jesus and see what he would say. And verse, skip down to verse 7. So when they continue asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Okay? And when we talk about sin, folks, we all have sin, all right? Matter of fact, Jesus was pretty adamant about this in, in uh, Matthew chapter 6, okay? He says, if you even look at a woman in a lustful manner, you have committed adultery. And I'm telling you, there were some eyes open and some mouths drop about that time, okay? And what he was telling these guys were, you know, don't act like you haven't committed this sin somewhere, okay? And it says, and again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. Folks, I need to be sensitive to my sin. I need to listen to the Holy Spirit. I need to realize that, man, You know, if if I'm feeling this way, I I shouldn't do this. This should not be a part of my life. Unforgiving, unforgiving. And then it says, one by one, with the oldest. Why the oldest? Because they, they are the wisest, okay? They are the wisest. They've been down that road. They've seen what, what hate and malice and wanting to get even and, and, and how that hurts. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman was standing in the midst. I always wondered when I read that verse, 
I wonder how long Jesus was silent. I don't know about you, but I remember when I was a kid and my dad walked in the room and didn't say anything. It seemed like an eternity. And the reason I think he would, so he would give her some time to think about what, what is going on. All right? Folks, pick your words wisely. Pick them wisely. And when Jesus was raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those uh, accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Folks, that is forgiveness. That is forgiveness. And Jesus uh, is it, just amazing to, to see him and see what he does. Corey Tim Boom says this, To call yourself a Christian, you don't have to forgive, but to be Christ-like, you must forgive. And I just jotted down a few things. Hurt, hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. People that have been hurt want someone else to hurt, and they want someone else to pay the price. The more pain, uh, the more pain consumes us, the more it will control us. Okay? Folks, you shouldn't, I, I mean, we need to walk in the Spirit. We need to do the right thing. We do not serve a do-nothing God. Why didn't God do this? Why didn't God do this? Folks, there's a, there's a perfect will for it. And I believe, in prayer especially, timing is the issue. God may do it, but he may not do it right then. And sometimes we need to take the first step. Those who cooperate with forgiveness will see and experience the beauty of redemption. Folks, that's what we're talking about. Redemption, restoring a relationship, restoring a family, restoring a marriage. Forgiveness is both a decision and a process, okay? We have to decide we're going to do this and that it's a process. It's not a one sentence, takes care of all. We have to pray. We have to bathe it in prayer. We have to, have, we have to pray, God, please take these feelings away from me. Please help me not to feel that way. Even sometimes, folks, when somebody's deeply hurt, if they just see the person, they don't have to say a word to them. They see them, that bitterness and that hurt uh, crops up. You know, we cannot change what hurts us, but we can choose not to let it define us. I'll say it again. We cannot change what hurts us, but we can choose not to let it define us. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 5, and I close with this scripture, Matthew 5, verse 23. This is how serious Jesus is about forgiveness. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. And that's, that's pretty strong word. That, that, you know, I, I guarantee you when he was teaching this, that got somebody's attention. Because see, it's easier for me to give money to the church than to apologize or to say I was wrong or I didn't treat you right. It's easier to do that. But he's saying, man, get right, get right first. Folks, the Holy Spirit is here in the church. There's no doubt in my mind. There is no doubt. But how much better would it be if we came in here together and in one accord, no attitude, no malice, no anger, none of that. What do you think our services would be like? You know what I think? I think we'd have invitations to about 12 o'clock at times. I don't think we'd be looking at our watches and wondering, is my roast going to burn? Put it on low and let it cook longer. 
I'm just saying, man, I'm telling you, God could do a serious work. And folks, we just have to take the first step. We have to say, God, I can't do this on my own. But with your help, I can do it. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I pray that even tonight, I know we don't give an invitation. But God, I've said this many, many times. If, if we ask ourselves three questions every night, every night before we go to bed, am I right with God? And Lord, I know you'll give us the right answer. Am I right with my family? And am I right with my fellow man? I believe we could change a lot of things in this life. God, you want us to be united in one accord. You want families to be put, in, put back together. You want families and you want friendships and you want a work relationship to work. And God, I pray that we would set the bar high. I pray that we would be examples of forgiveness. God, everyone here has been hurt. And most people here have been hurt in a church also. And God, we can't change that. But God, but God we can change our attitude towards that. God, I pray that even tonight we'll do business with you in our, and just in the quietness of our home. And God, I pray, I pray we'll let it go. God, we'd be so much better off. We would sleep better. We would feel better. We would have a better attitude. So God, I pray that you start with us right here. Those who are online, those who hear this message, God, help us to do business with you about this. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.